Um, here is the first problem on the work energy theorem. The problem states that a sled with a mass of 8 kg moves in a straight line on a frictionless horizontal surface. Now, in any physics problem, as I keep on saying in the class, you should take note of these terms like frictionless, moving at a constant velocity, because that has some important implication on how we approach the problem. So in this case, you should note that it is moving on a frictionless horizontal surface. The problem also states that at one point in its path, its speed is given to be 4 meters per second, and after it has traveled 2.50 meters beyond this point, the speed is now at 6 meters per second. Use the work energy theorem to find a force acting on the sled, assuming that this force is constant and that it acts in the direction of the sled's motion. So it means to say that the direction of the force, since it is a vector, nagina direction, it is also moving. If we assume the sled to move towards the right, that is also the direction of your force. Now, I pre-illustrated this ahead. So this is your sled. And I just noted uh, two distinct points to fit the description of the problem. So basically, I noted point A and point B. Where point A, maunisa ang the point where its speed is initially at 4 meters per second. And then after it has traveled from the problem, this, this, this displacement, which is equal to 2.50 meters, you arrive now at point B, which also has a distinct velocity, which is given to be equal to uh, 6.00 meters per second. Now, you could actually try to find the net force acting on the sled, and that is this term over here, F net, or that is where my net force is applied. Now, uh, it's very clear in the problem that we have to use the work energy theorem. So, from the work energy theorem, work energy, because this is the easiest way to solve this problem other than um, doing it the long way where you have to um, like apply Newton's law and all the kinematics equation that you knew. But from the work energy theorem, you just have to remember that the work net or the total work done, take note, it's the total work, not just any work, is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. In this case, um, this is just like saying that the total work done on my sled A is the cause or causes my sled to move or to change its velocity from 4 meters to 6 meters. So we, we just have to uh, use that theorem and expand from this one. So work net is equal to uh, 1 half. Just going to um, expand kinetic energy equation. This is the final velocity since we are getting the change in the kinetic energy. 1 half m v naught or v initial squared. So this is just the expansion of the kinetic energy. Now, if you notice in the problem, what is basically asked is the force, right? So at first glance um, of the work energy theorem, you might say that, oh my God, I'm not getting any force from here. I don't see any force in my equation. But then again, you have to remember the very basic equation of work. So I'm going to write here, recall this one, that work is basically um, the absolute value or the magnitude of your force, magnitude of your displacement, and then the cosine theta, where theta is the angle between F and D. Now, if we are dealing with net work, then we could just simply express it from the basic equation of work. But we will now have, instead of F, we will have F net times the displacement cosine theta. So the, basically, the change here is in how you express F to F net. Since you are not getting work alone, but you're getting trying to get the network. Okay, now since uh, it's very apparent in the problem that theta is a zero degrees, and I don't have to show that to you because by now you should have mastered it that the cosine of zero is just one 
So that leads us to this equation that the network is just the I'm just I'm going to take the absolute value from the equation so that it will be easier. F net times the displacement. Okay? So that means to say that this expression over here could be something that we can substitute from the equation of work. So we can express this one then as F net multiplied by the displacement is just equal to the change in the objects or in the sled's velocity. Alright? So if you try to inspect the equation, this is a very good news because you are now seeing F net, which is what you are looking for. So in our class, I always say that we need to find a way to isolate F net. So the first thing that we are going to do, and I guess it's very apparent, is to simply multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over the, sorry, I'm looking for F net, sorry, 1 over D, or the displacement. All right, so when you do that, uh, you have isolated F net now. You have F net over here is just equal to 1 half m, the final velocity squared, minus 1 half m, initial velocity squared, all over the displacement d. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, sir, what does it mean, or what value should I put in my final and the initial velocity? So this is also crucial in solving the, the problem. So you should realize that from this above, this one should take the value of your vf, and this one should take the value of your v0, or initial velocity, simply because the point V is the final velocity or the final um, point, and VA is where you started um, from analyzing the motion of the object. So that means to say VF, VF will just be VB. However, um, the second thing that I should do from this one, and I suggest, although this is not really that crucial, but this is helpful, is to factor out common terms out of the numerator. That means to say one, one half m will be factored out. So you are left with vf squared minus v naught squared. So this is not really that important, but it will be helpful in simplifying your solution, especially in um, substituting the values. So you have one half multiplied by the mass. So as I've said earlier, vf will be vb squared. The v naught should be the VA squared. So this should not be interchanged. Divided by, so everything is divided by the displacement D. So from here, uh, you have an expression of F net. You just have to substitute the value. So one half, the mass as given in the problem is 8 kilograms. So 8 kilograms, you multiply that one with the final velocity which is uh, given at 6 meters per second. And then do not forget that that is squared minus the initial velocity, which is at 4. We're given at 4 meters per second. And do not forget again to square that one. And everything is divided by the displacement D, which is 2.50 meters. 2.50 meters. All right, so in our scratch, just to check whether our equations, I mean, our units are checking out, we have to check. So from the numerator, you should get um, kilograms, um, m over s squared will yield meters squared over seconds squared. And from our denominator, we are actually getting meters out of it. So uh, checking one meter will cancel out. So that led to this units, we have kilograms multiplied by meter per second squared and voila this is very nice because that's what you want we want an expression i mean we want a unit of newton since we're solving for the force and this might sound very very innocent but this could be very helpful in checking whether you missed something in your equation because if ever it's not newton then my friend you have to go back and check somewhere okay so from there you just have to substitute the values and i am pretty confident that i'm doing it right because i got the I, I get the correct units. So when you substitute that one, you end up with exactly 32 newtons. So this is the F net for the force. If we go back to the problem, this must be the force that uh, must be supplied to the sled in order for it to change its velocity from 4 meters to uh, 6 meters per second when that force is applied over this displacement of 2.50 meters. All right. 
So now, do you, um, if you ask, sir, is that the only way to solve this problem? Nope. You could actually solve the, the problem by solving first the change in the kinetic energy. You can do that. Then after you get the change in kinetic energy, you try to express work net as this one. F net times D. So after you solve that, you have F net times D. And then you, ch you have solved now for the change in kinetic energy, some number N. So from there, you can actually solve F net. And this is fine with me. However, um, the drawback of solving it in that matter class, bisaya pa ba? Imuhang isolve daan ang kinetic energy. So na na number. Then after anak, kaya anak pa ni mo ni gamito na equation. Tapos i-equal ni mo to atong number. Makakuha, gihapon ka. However, the drawback there is, um, there will be instances where if ever masayup ka sa first part, pag solve ni mo sa kinetic energy, kaya nasayup ka. Then isubstitute bihan ni mo na sa work net. Masayup po to siya. So the easiest way, and I mean the safest way to do it, is to do ingon aning a solution para one time ra ka mag substitute. Because most of the time you get uh, an incorrect answer just by simply plugging in it, in, plugging in uh, an incorrect value. So the risk of doing that is lesser if we do it in one shot na equation rather than itagpi tagpi na to ang pagsolve. But if dili nyo kaya mag-usahon ninyo just like this one ang pag-solve, then it's fine with me. You just have to be careful. Okay? So this is the first uh, solution, I mean, first problem on the work energy theorem that is pre-recorded and you just have to check out the second problem.